a man wakes up in an unfamiliar place, not understanding where he is, how he got there, and where his phone is. He tries to reach out to someone, but a voice from behind the door advises him to be silent and calm down. An unseen interlocutor informs the man that he has been drugged and he will feel very unwell for the next few days. But now it's time for him to work and he bids him farewell. Joe attempts to make sense of everything that has happened when he hears a small slot opening on the door through which several food packets fall. Joe rushes to the door and asks the invisible guard for help. He has a pregnant wife at home who needs his assistance, so he needs to get out of here as soon as possible. He is told several times to step away from the door and not to reach his hand into the slot, but the man doesn't listen, resulting in a severe blow to his wrist. He cries, repeating that he doesn't deserve this and shouldn't be here. Later, Joe bends his wrist with his own tie and explores the strange place. He picks up the food and a small water bottle, but just as he's about to try the debuse meal, a siren starts blaring, followed by the voice of the Malord Corporation's AI welcoming him to a training program where he will become the best version of himself. Joe asks for information but his neighbor advises him to keep quiet. His questions will remain unanswered anyway. A countdown to midnight begins, so Joe needs to prepare for his last hours of rest. The man doesn't understand what this means and tries to find out his interlocutor's name, but the interlocutor is surprised. Do they even have names here? The next minute, screams from people behind the walls start to reach Joe, telling him to be quiet and let them rest. The unseen interlocutor advises Joe to accept that this place is my lord, and now he should try to get some sleep because tomorrow will be the longest day of his life. Joe sits against the wall, when suddenly a melodic whistle is heard, followed by a man's voice begging not to do it and promising to exceed the plan tomorrow. However, he seems to be beaten and dragged away somewhere. Joe covers his ears to avoid hearing the unfortunate man's voice and the AI's voice that reassures Joe that everything happening is meant to restore his peace of mind. Finally, the sun rises over the enclosure. The same whistle sounds and a male voice congratulates Joe on the beautiful day and reminds him that the cameras must be kept clean, otherwise he will face punishment. At this time the neighbor's voice speaks again, advising him to obey the orders and calling the nighttime incident a motivational speech to which he will soon become accustomed. Joe gathers some scarce trash and tosses it into a foul-smelling hole in the floor covered by a small hatch, and there he notices something strange under his feet and, pulling on a strand, discovers that it's hair beneath which a human skull can be discerned. Joe screams in horror, but the neighbor knows that many people have died here, so Joe will have to get used to it. The neighbor reminds him of the contract he signed when he joined the company. Mallard gives this to everyone, but few read the fine print all the way to the end so everything has its price. The sooner he gets into the rhythm, the easier his days will be. He just needs to do his work. At that moment, the AI voice kicks in. Joe interrupts it, shouting that he worked for the corporation for 10 years and demands to be released immediately, to which Mallord announces that a qualification enhancement seminar begins today. His productivity has declined recently, and now he has the opportunity to rectify it. Joe was once an exemplary employee, but he gradually stopped appreciating my lord and everything she gave him. So now he has a new job that will last from 6 in the morning until 10 at night. During this time, he must turn the mill. One point for a complete rotation. His daily quota is 50 rotations. Do less, and he will be punished. But Mallard's motto is, enough is not good enough. He must strive to keep his position, salary, corporate apartment, and his life Mallard wishes him success. Joe tries to persuade the AI to release him, but the neighbor advises not to waste his strength. At the moment, he needs to survive, and for that, he must work. And Joe gets to work. At first, it's very difficult for him, but he pushes through, and it starts to move. Mallard congratulates him on his first rotation, suggesting a virtual toast for his first victory. Joe pushes the mill, listening to the corporation's advertisements. Finally, the signal for the end of the work sounds, and Mallard congratulates him on completing his first day of self-improvement work. He exceeded the quota, which is very good. At night, Joe hears women screams as Mallard announces another dismissal. Later, the neighbor, learning that Joe doubled the quota, advises him not to maintain such a pace. Joe can't understand the point. If he doesn't meet the quota, he's punished, but if he exceeds it and is last among all, it means death to which the neighbor advises not to tell everyone about his quota. They're not friends, and the neighbor will always try to outdo him. 
They all have one thing in common. They climbed the corporate ladder, receiving many bonuses from the company and seemingly reached the top. But, alas. Suddenly, Joe starts talking about his wife and the future son they had long awaited. And now, he's here. To which the neighbor advises him to work as well as he can. It's the only way to survive here, but overdoing it is not an option. A new work day begins. Joe pushes the mill and remembers how he and his wife inspected their new home, and he promised to work even harder to pay for it. The work day ends when there's a knock on Joe's door, and he's ordered to remove all of his clothes. He becomes scared but complies. After undressing, he steps out of the door and finds himself under a stream of water. After quickly washing himself, he returns to his chamber. The next day arrives, and the weather outside is significantly hotter, causing Joe to quickly become exhausted. He asks his neighbor what this mill is and what they are all doing here. The neighbor responds that they produce nothing, so the place is empty of purpose or meaning. Soon, Joe runs out of water and tries to call out to the guard, but the guard advises him to collect his urine and drink it, filtered through his sneakers. Joe is absolutely reluctant to do so, and the invisible interlocutor laughs at him, saying that Malord knows what he needs. Here, he will be pushed to his limits, and Malord wants to see how far he can go before breaking. Joe continues to work, recalling how his wife doubted his ability to pay all the bills, and he promised that their child would have a better life. That evening, Malord notes Joe's growing self-awareness. Suddenly, he sees a name carved out. Alex. Later, he asks the neighbor who Alex is, and the neighbor calls him a legend who managed to escape from here. The next morning, Mallard thanks him for his diligence and gives him a personalized pen. Then she displays a new daily quota, 370 laps. Joe is horrified and expresses his frustration in the rudest way. The AI explains that people don't always realize their strengths. It's tough, but this is how the world changes. A signal sounds, and Joe starts pushing the mill. Suddenly, he notices that the counter doesn't mark the laps. Instead, a cross appears, indicating punishment. One cross equals two laps, and it continues geometrically. Then, the person gives up, but Joe is not planning to do that. With all his strength, he pushes the mill. However, his strength leaves him. When the neighbor learns the number of laps assigned to him, he becomes furious. Joe exceeded the unattainable number of laps, argued with Malord, and now, all of them, will suffer. Malord then announces that he failed to meet the quota and disappointed his colleagues. Taking care of them is the company's main principle, so he will have a new colleague, Kate Stevens. Joe is horrified when he sees his wife's face on the screen and promises to exceed any plan just to keep her from being here. Mallord gives him one day and activates a massive, glowing screen above his compartment, not allowing him to rest. A new workday begins, and Joe starts pushing his mill under Mallord's wishes for a productive day. Suddenly, he sees himself in front of him, a second Joe mocking his hopes. He worked his whole life, hoping his efforts would pay off, but now he's failed and should give up. However, Joe stubbornly continues pushing the mill, and at exactly 10 mog, he completes 370 laps. Mallard congratulates him on this and cancels the penalty. As motivation, they show him images of his wife with a baby in her arms. Joe cries tears of joy, but immediately afterward, tears of sorrow, as he missed his son's birth. In the morning, he asks his neighbor to tell him everything he knows about this place. The neighbor recalls his son, whom he saw only in his childhood because his father was always at work. He advises Joe to investigate the blind spot. Joe rushes to the wall and, after a long contemplation, finds an erase spot, remembering the gifted pen. He uses it to puncture the wall and slightly expand the recess overnight. But a new day dawns and Joe begins pushing the mill, and at night, he again chips away at the wall. This continues for many days and nights. Eventually, he manages to create a hole he can crawl through. Joe crawls through it, but ends up in complete darkness, where suddenly a person appears, hits him on the head, and wishes him sweet dreams. Joe regains consciousness in his chamber. The hole is sealed, and the AI voice sounds once more. Malord is disappointed, but still willing to give him one last chance. He's so fixated on his desires that he doesn't see the big picture. So his neighbor was punished, and his quota has been increased to 1,000 laps per day. Joe rushes to the wall and learns that his neighbor's leg is broken and he won't be able to complete even a single lap. 
Afterward, the man confesses that they are being controlled by a computer he created himself. The first algorithm he wrote self-improved and created the second, and so on. Now people don't know how it works. Then Joe has an epiphany. If they don't work, everyone's score will drop to zero. And what will the algorithm do then? Joe shouts to the others, telling them about his discovery. People respond, supporting his proposal to stop working. But the workday begins, and everyone starts pushing their mills because they are afraid of dying. Joe tries to persuade his neighbors, but realizing the futility, he cries and picks up the pen. In the evening, he talks with his neighbor, and the neighbor reveals his name, Alex. He also managed to escape from his chamber but was brought back, just like Joe, so getting out of here is impossible. At night, Joe hears that Malord has taken away Alex. In the morning, the AI wakes him up and, to boost his spirits, shows him images of his wife and their walking baby. Joe is horrified, he can't be here for so long. He shouts insults at Mallard and he's fired. Immediately, the doors open and a crowd of clerks enters, positioning themselves on the sides and silently watching Joe as he thrashes among them, trying to get an answer. But then, a man in uniform enters and confesses that he enjoys firings. Twelve clerks witnessed each of them. The man loads a syringe and laments Joe's ingratitude when Mallord gave him the whole world. The man hopes to soon have a house available on one of the streets where a single mother with a young son lives. And at that moment, Joe loses control and starts beating him. Mallard announces a security guard's failed mission and his impending firing, while Joe, on the contrary, will be promoted. The man stops, feeling blood on his hands, but the battered guard asks him to continue. And then Joe stands up and shouts that he is not a monster, and he leaves. And right away, Joe finds himself in an office where several employees are sitting, and his interlocutor congratulates him on passing the career advancement simulator. It all happened within an hour, and his son hasn't been born yet. He struggled with middle-level managers but got stuck on the eighth level. Malord realized that he was too good. His productivity increased, his personal qualities improved, and the coup he organized exceeded all expectations. He's a non-conventional thinking leader. Joe takes off the suction cups from himself, but his interlocutor doesn't pay attention and invites him to see his new office. In Malord, there are numerous positions, and you can climb to the top for years. Soon the pair reaches the desired floor, but Joe keeps thinking about the time spent in the simulation. Here's the office with new gadgets. Joe also expects a salary increase and other perks. There's a contract on the table, stating that disclosing what he experienced in the simulation will lead to immediate termination. Joe signs it and receives assurances that Mal Lord is his company forever. The man sits down at the table, looks at a photo of his wife, and calls Kate. She's surprised, and the man can barely hold back tears, recalling his long, eventful day. After catching his breath a bit, he promises to burn this damned place. The movie is presented as a science fiction film, but behind every word or action of the hero, the reality of the modern corporate system is clearly revealed. The blatant exploitation of people, causing them to start living to work, rather than working to live, 